It was up in the mountains. We had this ceremony every year. We had it, and everyone from miles around came in for it. Cousins, aunts, uncles, and the kids, grandmothers, grandfathers, everyone. And we set it up around this big natural pool with pine trees and palm trees. All the trees were there. We had thousands of these big urns, you know the kind, and everyone would dance and sing, and it lasted for three days. <laughs> everyone cooked and looked forward to it all the year. Well, one year, we were in the middle of it, and I was just a boy at the time. And anyway, it was evening, and suddenly a whole lot of tigers came in. I don't know where they came from. They rushed in, snarling, knocked over the, all the urns, and it was really a mess. Well, we spent the whole next year rebuilding everything but in the middle of the ceremony. The next time, the same thing happened. These tigers rushed in again and broke everything and then went back into the mountains. This must have gone on for four or five years this way, rebuilding and then the tigers would come and break everything. We were getting used to it, 
finally we had a meeting and decided to make this tigers part of the ceremony you know to expect them we began to put food in the urns so the tigers would have something to eat not much at first you know crackers things like that then later we put more food until finally we were saving our food all year for the tigers then one year the tigers didn't come they never came back
Okay, I'm going to start out with a new poem that uh, I was just finishing. It's called I Don't, I don't Need It, I Don't Want It, and You Cheated Me Out of It. I'm old and I'm bitter and I'm not going to tell you what, what I, think. I think. Money and politics spoil the completely money. And politics spoil the completely money. And politics spoil the completely money. And I learned to like it. And you're trying to get through the rest of the day, and you're trying to get through the rest of the day by day, and at the very best, you can only keep it hot for three months. I'm lazy, and I don't want to do nothing except what I have to do. Tight as a crab's ass. Now I want you to stay down below the waist and under no circumstances come above the shoulders. And I want you to sniff around and keep sniffing, keep sniffing. You want to walk away with the smell. With the smell. And you all find your own and you're running. I'm not going out tonight because it's more trouble than it's worth. You're going to stay here and drink. You're going to stay here and drink. You're going to stay here and drink. Sit in the brown velvet chair, having a chair, good time, having a good time, time by yourself. By yourself. So and I'll tell you something. You think you're so great? Well, everybody thinks you're a joke. It's a miracle I survived. What kind of an artist are you anyway? You do nothing but lay around in bed all day watching TV. I don't need it. I don't want it. And you cheat me out of that. I don't need it. I don't want it. You cheated me. Take it to the limit one more time. You gotta make them come. 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 You gotta make them for yourself. And then fake it for yourself. Give it to you. Give it to you. Give it to you. Because I want you to give me the money and have a good time. Make the money and have a good time. Make the money and have a good time. Sheer pain and I love it. The palace days. Take it away. Take it away. You find it. Give it to me. You can. You can. This intimacy and I'm. I'm glad this one's over. Thank, Thank you, you for telling, telling me what, me what I, I did was successful. Was successful. I, I love, love being served. I love being served. Being served. You're, You're only trying, trying to make them fall in love, love with you. You're only trying, trying to make them fall in love, love, love with you. And then rip and them, off, them off, off as nicely as you can. And you keep working and it over and over again. And you keep working it over and over again. Trying to score. And I spent the whole week having me telling people how well we're doing and how great everything is. And I'm going to make it this time. Maybe, Maybe I want to make, make, make it perfect. perfect. And you give, you give, and 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 so I go to work. I go to work. I'm waiting for tomorrow. So I go I got an appointment at 11, and I like working more than being with anyone. With anyone. And I'm laying on the bed sheet, waiting on for the bed sheet, waiting for enough time to, 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 to pass for me to go to sleep. Because I gotta get up early. I gotta get up early. Thinking it over again. Thinking it over again. Thinking about it. I'm running a film clip of what I was saying this morning on the telephone. This morning on the telephone. I got the I don't want to do it anymore. I got the I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do any more fundraising. And as a matter of fact, I refuse to raise ten cents for anyone. I don't believe the lie anymore. She had a back off because she was sin. If I'm going to hustle, I want to hustle for myself. myself. And in answer and to, your answer question, to your question, you should think of me, as being, think of me as being dead. You know, after you know, a few after months, it's hard to remember hard somebody. To remember and after a year, it's after trying to remember a party I went to last year. And I thought, thought you'd learn to love me, but I guess you never will. And I thought I'd learn to love you because you feel so good. But, but it was, was pizza, pizza, quiche, or beef wellington takeout. You miss giving me what I want. You miss giving me what I want. I don't care for my life or anyone else's. I'm an old man, and in five to six years I'll be falling apart. So I want hundred dollar pledges, and I want them as fast as they can come.
poetry, politics, pragmatism, and friends. I never, I never thought it would end up just turning a buck. buck. And, and all, all I, I want, want is publicity, because at least it gives, it gives me a false feeling of being loved and sells books. And everything you thought you understood is a misunderstanding or completely, or completely wrong. Paralysis, fear, fear and deceit. And I don't recommend to anyone to, anyone to be alive. And I, can't I can't imagine anyone want to be alive except if they're completely deluded. And I don't recommend to anyone being born again at any time, anywhere. For only asking for trouble. Only asking for trouble. And you're floating at the high water mark, and you already spent your whole life trying to stay afloat. Whole life trying to stay afloat. Concentration, will, will power, and, and endurance. I'm trying to get through it like you. you. Like you. And, nobody and nobody told me what, what to do, and I took what I wanted. You just skid it out of control. You just skid it out of control. You just skid it out of control. The worst is as that moment happening, you hit a bank You hit a bank of snow. I'm a, I'm a tough old fag, old fag and, and I know what I'm talking about. We got a completely, got a completely different, different situation. We got a completely, got a completely different, situation. different situation. John, it's time, it's for, time for defense. I like, I like the feel of a gun in my hand. I like the feel of a gun in my hand. Smith and Wesson, 44 Mac, the model 29, three tons behind that bullet. My hand wants to be holding it. My hand wants to be holding it. Picking up responses, safety and safe the world outside. The world outside. We're building ourselves a jungle fort. Jungle fort. Surface to air missiles. Surface to air missiles. Increased deployment. Readiness alert. Readiness alert. Because tonight, Cause tonight the, air the air is jacking with, with some more slightly, slightly dangerous, dangerous aspects. aspects. I can't, I can't see, it, see it, but I can feel, feel the threat. The threat. So, so I want, I want double, double protection. I want double, double protection. protection. I love the feeling of being armed with weapons, and, and I love the feeling of being surrounded by well armed attendants. Some of the Secretary of War, thank you for doing what we wanted you to do. I got a wheel of iron and strength of steel. I got a wheel of iron and strength of steel. We live on a rough street, on a rough increased street, expenditures for defense, for defense, surface to surface, surface, to surface, surface to missiles, reduced debt, 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 humble and seemingly accessible to everyone. Yo, movie yo, star, movie star, star yo, 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 wild imagination. Comrades, long, long as has it been since we drawn our sword shining, and you want it. You got it. You got it. You want it. You want it. You want it. You got 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 it. You want it. You want it. You got it. And extreme sadness if you let yourself think. Glorious weapon systems disguised in ordinary life. Heroin and the Samadhi of the gods. I'm completely alone and I love it. I'm completely alone and I love it. Can't you tell us the best thing about, about yourself? yourself? Tell me what you do with trash. Tell me how you treat trash. Tell me what you do if you flush it down the toilet. There's nothing I love about you, but I love the way you love me. I'm having myself a little love and tenderness because it's all I ever wanted in the first place. Warm and intimacy, world class, cuff cuddling on L and on L. You know how to give me exactly what I need. We're doing a double backstroke in an S. Williams movie. Making a good time, making money and having a good time. Making money and having a good time. And having a good time. And you always get everything you want. And only you get it after you stop, you stop wanting it. And I'm not going to think about anything, and I don't want to work anything out. If you only knew how sweet and powerful it is to have no expectations and be ruthless and hungry. And we're God the, the impossibility to stop it. We're God the impossibility to stop it. We're God the impossibility to stop it. The decision has been received from the cabinet delivered by the Secretary of State. Abort mission to final enlightenment. Take yourself direct to the nearest Buddha field if you learn how. And if you didn't, you got a whole lot coming. So I'm going to make it easy on you, kid. 
Your BMW, BMW broke, broke down, down on the freeway and you're, you're walking, walking into, into the blackness, blackness with the sky holding a flashlight. A flashlight. And, and you, you come out with a funny, funny taste, taste in your, in your mouth, mouth and keep smiling. smiling. completely attached to delusion. I'm going to live forever and I want to fly. I'm going to live forever and I want to fly. I'm going to live forever and I want to fly. Take me to wardrobe. You can hang around. You crash crashing, coming down. Get it up. Pull on it for a while. Full dress with a smile. Warm the G.I. like cocaine sprinkled on my pussy. Air Force One is waiting on the runway. Keep the dice on the table. You're coming in on a roll. You're coming in on a roll. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. I love being. I love being with you because we're, we're on drugs. drugs. When you when got, you got it bad, we, we got, got it good. Is, is it big, big enough, enough for you? you? I want to spend the rest of my life on a holiday. I want to spend the rest of my life on a holiday. I want to spend the rest of my life on a holiday. Holiday in the news. Breakfast is in bed between the cool bed sheets. Slide my way. Just, just work, work and, and sex, sex and, and drugs, drugs in New, in New, New York. York. And, and when, when I, I come down, down all, all I want to be is high again. Rather than hang around and hang around. Around. Hang around. Hang around. Hang around. Hang around. Everybody knows is a junkie. Everybody I know is a junkie. Everybody I know is a junkie. Everybody I know is a junkie. Is a junkie. Now, you now you drove, drove the dots and dots and down to Jones Street because you had nothing, you had nothing else, else to do. Your feet were pushing in the sand. Pushing in the sand. Oh, shoot. The ocean was shooting white waves. Women, 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 you. We just drunk on We just sell beer. I want to sing my songs over and over again. Over again. All I ever know is. Dissatisfaction, Dissatisfaction and change, change and I won, and I won. won. And you got the slight, and you, you got, got the slight. slight. Sinking paranoid, and you got sinking feeling, feeling, and you got sinking feeling, you got sinking feeling. Like when, when you got hepatitis, everything looks yellow. yellow. This is where I started out. And, and you think, think you woke up from sleeping and you feel you're dreaming. The, the telephone is ringing, and you're afraid, and you're afraid, afraid he doesn't, doesn't like it, and you're afraid he doesn't, doesn't like it, and he wouldn't have said, wouldn't have said I'll, I'll see you Saturday. Saturday. I, I don't, don't want to be left, left alone. alone. I didn't mean to mislead you. I just wish you were somebody I love. I wish you were somebody I love. And I'm asleep, and I'm dreaming, and I'm remembering this time I'm dreaming. Sitting you're again, sitting again, again. having a cheeseburger, sitting again, again. 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 at the counter with the napkin, with napkin, 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 I put my muscle in it for as long as, long as, as I could. could. And given all you, and given all you wretched bad karma, bad and Murphy's karma. Law that if the worst can happen, it will. And, and it was a complete and failure. And it was a complete failure. And it was a complete failure. And it was a complete failure. I'm tired of grabbing and grabbing. I don't want anybody to push you. You don't get nobody. You boxed yourself you into another one. Box, you boxed box, yourself into another one. I can't go ahead. I can't go ahead. And I can't, I can't go, go, back. go back. And you, you just, just gotta, gotta go, go out. out. And, and you just gotta, gotta go out. And I'm out and I had to go out. And I had to go out. Cause I called out for Florida. I called out for Florida. 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 Florida.
They rummaged through the back of this station wagon, said nada, said nada, and walked away. And then a few minutes later, the German 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 shepherd came by by and took a leak on the car, just missing the wind. I'm having myself a little love. 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 I'm having myself a little
Mm. He walked into the bar with his fishing gear and a bit of a swagger. Have to stand up to these people, you know. They respect you for it. <clears throat> he found himself somewhat stonily received, and turning from the bar with his mug of beer to face the room, he maladroitly snagged an old peasant in the scrotum with his fishing plug. <clears throat> He whipped out his switchblade with a poorly attuned attempt at easy joviality. Well, I guess we'll just have to cut the whole thing off. <clears throat> Turning away, he made an ineffectual gesture from a New Yorker cartoon uh, with his knife inadvertently blinding the proprietor's infant son. <clears throat> Seeing that all his friendly overtures had fallen to mentally flat, he saw fit to withdraw as unobtrusively and expeditiously as possible. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, this text, written in collaboration with Kells Elvins in 1938, commemorates the first appearance of Dr. Benway. <clears throat> it's called uh, Twilight's Last Gleamings. It. <clears throat> yes, yes, America, off Jersey coast. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no cause for alarm. We have a minor problem in the boiler room, but everything is now under uh, sound effects of a nuclear blast. Explosion splits the boat. Dr. Benway ships Dr. Drunkenly added two inches to a four inch incision with one stroke of his scalpel. Perhaps the appendix is already out, doctor, the nurse said. <laughs> And peering dubiously over his shoulder, I saw a little scar. The appendix already out. I'm taking the appendix out. What do you think I'm doing here? <clears throat> Perhaps the appendix is on the left side, doctor. That happens sometimes, you know. Stop breathing down my neck. I'm coming to that. Don't you think I know where an appendix is? I studied appendectomy in 1904 at Harvard. He lifts the abdominal wall and searches along the incision, dropping ashes from his cigarette. <clears throat> Get me a new scalpel. This one's got no edge to it. <clears throat> he thrusts a red fist at her. The doctor reels back and flattens against the wall, a bloody scalpel clutched in one hand. The patient slides off the operating table, spilling intestines across the floor. <laughs> Dr. Benway sweeps instruments, cocaine, and morphine into his satchel. Sour up. I can't be expected to work under such conditions. <laughs> By the dawn's early light, Dr. Benway pushed through a crowd at the rail and boarded the first light boat. Are you all right, he said, seating himself among the women. I'm the doctor. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, from a Western in progress entitled The Place of Dead Roads. Uh, my protagonist, Kim Carson, finds himself in deadly conflict with Mr. Hart, the press tycoon, and old man Bickford, a uh, beef and oil baron. And Bickford has a special price on Kim's head because Kim killed old man Bickford's son in a gunfight. <laughs> Real Western. <laughs> Yeah. For three days, Kim camped on the mesa top, sweeping the valley with his binoculars. A cloud of dust headed south, told him they figured him to ride south for Mexico. He had headed north instead, into a land of sandstone formations. And everywhere, caves popped into the red rock like bubbles in boiling oatmeal. Some of the caves had been lived in at one time or another. 
Rusty tin cans, pottery shards, cartridge cases. Kim found an arrowhead six inches long, chipped from obsidian, and a smaller arrowhead of rose-colored flint. Dusk was falling and blue shadows gathered in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains to the east. Sangre de Cristo, blood of Christ, rivers of blood, mountains of blood. Does Christ never get tired of bleeding? <laughs> it is raining in the Jimenez Mountains. It is raining, Anita Huffington. Last words of General Grant spoken to his nurse. Circuits in his brain flickering out like lightning in gray clouds. Pottery shards, arrowheads, rusting fish hooks. You can see there was a cabin here once. A hypodermic syringe glints in the sun. He holds the rose flint arrowhead in his hand. And he fondles the obsidian arrowhead, so fragile that they break every time they were used like bee stings, he wonders. Somebody made this arrowhead. It had a creator long ago. This arrowhead is the only proof of his existence. So living things can also be seen as artifacts designed for a purpose. So perhaps the human artifact had a creator. Perhaps a stranded space traveler needed the human vessel to continue his voyage, and he made it for that purpose. He died before he could use it. He found another escape route. This artifact, shaped to fill a forgotten need, now has no more meaning or purpose than this arrowhead without the arrow and the bow, the arm and the eye. Or perhaps the human artifact was the creator's last card played in an old game many light years ago. Chill of empty space, Kim gathers wood for a fire. The stars are coming out. There's the Big Dipper. His father points to battle geese in the night sky over St. Louis. His father's gray face on a pillow. <clears throat> Helpless pieces in the game he plays on this checkerboard of nights and days. So fragile, shivers and gathers wood. Slave gods in the firmament. He remembers his father's last words. Stay out of churches, son. <laughs> All I got a key to is the shit house. <clears throat> And swear to me, you will never wear a policeman's badge. <clears throat> Hither and thither, moves and checks and slays, and one by one, back in the closet lays. Rusty tin cans, pottery shards, cartridge cases, arrowheads, a hypodermic syringe glints in the sun. Now this uh, folkloric text from uh, the, ne the Lexington Narcotic Hospital uh, <clears throat> was actually inspired by a juvenile, the Roman satirist. He's speaking of Greek uh, uh, parasites and sycophants. All art, soul, sciences, a fasting Greek knows. Bid him go to hell, to hell he goes. If you but say you're warm, he breaks into a sweat. If you complain of a draft, he calls for his overcoat. There is an exclusive wing of Lexington reserved for the do rights, who are considered good rehabilitation prospects. They get better rooms and more medications. A do right always shows up with letters from his clergyman, banker, employer, and, you know, pictures of himself as an Eagle Scout. Shaking hands with a priest on graduation day, then. 
There's no limit to what they'll, they'll do. <clears throat> you know that type falls all over himself to light the boss's cigarette. The, the doctor walks into the ward and says, rather warm in here. As one man, the do-rights break out in a sweat and rush around opening windows. Cold in here, isn't it? Immediately, the do-rights see their breath in the air, snatch blankets and bundle themselves up to a chorus of chattering teeth. <clears throat> Front off his brown nose, fink to the bone. <clears throat> Doctor, when I die, I want to be buried right in the same coffin with you. <laughs> You're the finest, most decent, most deeply humane man I've ever known. I'm putting you down for additional medication, son. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Pusher should receive the death penalty. Of such stuff are do rights made. Get there firstest with a brownest nose. While down in the dim gray wards and day rooms where the do wrongs hawk and spit and shiver and vomit, fucking Crocker wouldn't give me a goofball. <laughs> he asked me what the American flag means to me, and I tell him, soak it in the hair one dock and I'll suck it. <laughs> says I got the wrong attitude. <laughs> I should see the chap and get straight with Jesus. <laughs> and then, with the tears streaming down their lousy pink faces, the two rights leap up as one man and bellow out the star-spangled banner. is a place of dead roads. Uh, rod riding yeggs and peat men and cat burglars, but bindle stiffs and hobo jungles. Near is salt chunk Mary the fence in a red brick house down by the tracks in Portobello, Idaho. Mary keeps an iron pot of pork and beans always on the fire. You eat first and talk business later. Watches and rings slop down on the kitchen table. She names a price. She doesn't name another. Mary could say no quicker than any woman I ever knew. And none of her no's ever meant yes. She kept the money in a cookie jar, but nobody thought about that. Her cold gray eyes would have seen the thought, and maybe something goes wrong on the next lay. John Law just happens by, or a citizen comes up with a load of double zero buckshot into your soft and tenders. <clears throat> um. Like Mr. Hart, uh, Kim has a dark side to his character. Unlike Mr. Hart, Kim is not afraid to hear the word death or take his bloody chances in a shootout. <clears throat> Saturday night, and maybe somebody from across the river comes into Uncle Tessa's saloon looking for trouble. He won't have to look far. The short barrel double action 44 tonight, Kim decides. As soon as Kim walks through the swinging door, he knows this is it. Two men at the bar by the door. One is tall and thin with a dead, sour, wooden face. The other tall and fattish and loose-lipped with lead-gray eyes. Loose-lipped smiles showing his awful yellow teeth. Now, I don't like drinking in the same room with a fairy. Do you, Clem? Kent says I do, Cash. 
Yeah, they want to bat it around a while, but Kim doesn't. Are you gentlemen referring to me? Kim's hand sweeps down to his belt and up smooth and casual, like he was giving Clem his visiting card. As Clem clears his holster with the 45, Kim shoots him in the stomach. Clem doubles forward and his false teeth fly out. <clears throat> his 45 plows a hole in the floor. Kim pivots and shoots Cash in the hollow of the throat. The bullet goes through and spatters the wall with slivers of white bone. Cash buckles and his 45 chunks back into the holster. Clem is weaving around trying to recock his 45 with numb fingers. Taking his time, Kim shoots him in the forehead. Both assholes are dead before they hit the floor. <clears throat> As Kim looks down at the two bodies crumpled there, spilling blood and brains on the floor, he experiences a rush of pure joy. <clears throat> two enemies will never bother him again. Two lousy sons of bitches melted into air and gun smoke. <clears throat> like a prisoner who has killed his guards, he steps lightly through an open door. Yeah, progressive education. When Kim was 15, his father allowed him to withdraw from the school because he was so unhappy there and so much disliked by the other boys and their parents. <laughs> I don't want that boy in the house again, said Colonel Greenfield. He looks like a sheep-killing dog. <clears throat> it is a walking corpse, said a St. Louis matron poisonously. Uh, years later, Kim settled that account. When informed of her death, he said, it isn't every corpse that can walk hers can't. <laughs> the boy is rotten clear through and he stinks like a polecat, Judge Ferris pontificated. But this was uh, more or less true. Uh, <clears throat> when angered, aroused, or excited, Kim flushed bright red and steamed off a rank of ruddish animal smell. <clears throat> the child is not wholesome, said Mr. Kindheart, in his usual restraint. Kim was the most unpopular boy in the school, if not in the town of St. Louis. <clears throat> oh, they got nothing to teach anyway, his father said. Well, the headmaster's a fucking priest. <laughs> uh, the summers they spent at the farm, and Kim loved squirrel hunting in the early morning, and usually went hunting with Jerry Ellisor, who lived next door, because Jerry had a slinky black hound dog. And everybody knows you can't find any squirrels without a dog to bark up the tree where a squirrel is. Kim remembers a friend of his father's, an unobtrusively wealthy man who traveled all over the world studying unusual methods of hand-to-hand -hand fighting. And he wrote a book about it. Kim remembers him as looking very safe and happy. He could kill anyone in sight and he knew it. And that was a good feeling. <laughs> The book was fascinating. Chinese practitioners who can kill with a soft, twisting blow just in the right place and at the right time. The soft touch, it is called. Kim hummed the funeral march happily. <laughs> and a magnificent, sulky old Indian who specialized in a lightning blow to the testicles. The golden target, he called it. He was the most unpleasant man I have ever met, the writer reports. After a scant quarter hour in his company, I was impotent for a full week. <laughs> now, so the writer, he tries to impress this old Midas by breaking a stack of bricks with his karate chop. And the Indian sets up an equal stack and adds one brick. Then he just so sort of lightly thumps the stack. And the writer points a finger at the top brick, which is undamaged. The old practitioner lifts the top brick. All the bricks under it have been shattered as if hit by a sledgehammer. And a bartender in Paris had fashioned a weapon from his breath. 
By taking certain herbs, he had developed the breath so pestiferous that. <laughs> then, standing almost six feet away, he breathed on me. Words cannot convey the vertiginous, retching horror that enveloped me as I lost consciousness. <laughs> and for days after, I shuddered at the memory of that awesome breath. Well, he beats the skunk at his own game, but generally speaking, when it comes down to hand, to teeth, claw, poison, uh, quill, shock, fighting, animals beat humans in any direction. So Kim had, of course, thought of living weapons, but the only animal that has been taught to attack reliably on command is the dog, though many other animals would be vastly more efficient as fighting machines, the bobcat, the lynx, the incomparable wolverine that can drive a bear from its kill. Kim looked in disdain at Jerry's dog, Rover, a skulking, cowardly, inefficient animal. <laughs> Kim usually spotted the squirrel before Rover could sniff it out. When Jerry wasn't around, Kim would corner Rover and transfix him with his witch stares. He intoned, bad dog. <laughs> Rower begins to cow and cringe and whimper, and finally, desperate to ingratiate himself, he rolls on his back and pisses all over himself. <laughs> While Kim enjoyed this spectacle, it was not enough to compensate for the continuous proximity of this filthy, fawning, vicious, shit-eating beast. <laughs> Well, but then, who am I to be critical, Kim thought philosophically. <laughs> Kim had just read a juicy story about African medicine men who capture hyenas and blind them with red-hot needles and burn out their vocal cords as they intone certain spells, binding the tortured animals to their will to fashion a silent, dedicated instrument of death. Kim looks speculatively at Rover and licks his lips. And Rover creeps whimpering behind Jerry's legs. And the colonel fills his pipe. They attacked at dawn like gray shadows. I saw a boy go down hamstrung. Next thing, his throat is ripped out. I couldn't see what was doing. It was like a ghost attack. But the boys knew, and the cry went up. Schmoon, schmoon, schmoon. That's the native word for hyenas blinded by the beastly medicine men. Now, we intended to capture a male gorilla of the mountain species there, somewhat smaller than the lowland breeds. So we had a cage just so big and big enough that I managed to nip into it and lock the door. I'll never forget my boys pleading to be let in as the hyenas tore them apart. Uh, that sight will haunt me to my dying day. <laughs> Couldn't chance it, you know. Uh, one boy was in the door, and that would have been it. Huh? <laughs> in their blind animal panic, they couldn't understand my position. And they screamed curses at me. Well, Kim put it, what can you expect from people with no breeding? Oh, yes, of course, exactly. Uh, Kipling, you know, the writer chap uh, speaks of the lesser breed without the law. <clears throat> Awfully depressing, all that. <laughs> Kim recruits a band of flamboyant and picturesque outlaws called the Wild Fruits. There's the crying gun who breaks into tears at sight of his opponent. What the matter, somebody take your lollipop? Oh, senor, I am sorry for you. <laughs> and the priest who goes into a gunfight, giving his adversary the last rites. And the blind gun who zeroes in with bat squeaks. Kim trains his men to identify themselves with death. He takes some rookie guns out to a dead horse, rotting in the sun, eviscerated by vultures. Kim points to the horse, steaming there in the noonday heat. All right, roll in it. What? Roll in it. Get the stink of death into your chaps and your boots and your guns and your hair. 
Well, most of us puked at first, but we got used to it and vultures followed us around, hopefully. <laughs> We always ride into town with the wind behind us. The townspeople gag and wretch. My God, what's that stink? It's the stink of death, citizens. <clears throat> and I think, personally, the whole planet stinks of death. <clears throat> and what are we going to do about it? Well, all this may have happened many times before in this old universe. Here we are trillions of years ago in Galaxy X. And a rally has been organized to protest the use of black holes as an energy source. A bit late, as it turned out, uh, closing time, gentlemen. <laughs> Brian Geisen has a bedtime story. It seems that trillions of years ago, a giant flicked grease from his fingers. One of these gobs of grease is our universe on its way to the floor. This piece is called The Unworthy Vessel. Daddy Longlegs looked like Uncle Sam on stilts and he ran this osteopath clinic outside East St. Louis and took in a few junky patients. For two notes a week, they could stay on the nod in green lawn chairs and look at the oaks and grass stretching down to a little lake in the sun. The nurse moves around the lawn with her silver tray, feeding the junk in we called her mother, wouldn't you? <laughs> Doc Benway and me was holed up there after a rumble in Dallas involving this aphrodisiac ointment. Doc goofed on ether and mixed in too much Spanish fine and burned the prick off a police commissioner. <laughs> Come to Daddy Longlegs to cool off, and we find him cool and casual in a dark room with potted rubber plants and a silver tray on the table where he likes to see a week in advance. The nurse shows us to a room with rose wallpaper, and we have this bell. Any hour of the day or night, just ring, and Mother charges in with a loaded hypo. One day, we are sitting out in the lawn chairs with lap robes and... Doc picks up a piece of grass. He says, junk turns you on a vegetable. It's green, see? A green fix should last a long time. So we check out of the clinic and rent a house, and Doc starts cooking up this green junk. The basement is full of tanks, smell like a compost heap of junkies. So finally, he draws off this heavy green fluid and loads it into a hypo big as a bicycle pump. <laughs> now we must find a worthy vessel, he says. And we flush out this old goofball artist and tell him it is pure Chinese H from the Ling Dynasty. <laughs> and Doc shoots the whole pint of green right into the main line. Yellow jacket turns fibers gray, green, and withers up like an old turnip. And I say, I'm getting out of here, me. And Doc says, <coughs> an unworthy vessel, obviously. <coughs> With dog in case. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
had this dream, and in it my mother is sitting there, cutting out pictures of hamsters from magazines. In some of the pictures, the hamsters are pets, and some are just scenes where hamsters are somewhere in the background. She's got a whole pile of these, these cedar chips. You know the kind, the kind from the, the bottoms of hamster cages. She's gluing them into the frames for the pictures. She glues them together and frames the pictures and, and then hangs them over, over the fireplace. That's more or less her method. And suddenly I, I realize that this is just her way of suggesting to me that I should become a structuralist filmmaker, which I had, you know, planned to do anyway. Clem Schneid, I am a private asshole. <laughs> As a private investigator, I run into more death than the law allows. I mean the law of averages. Yes, routine case of industrial sabotage and the factory blows up, killing 23 people. Well, these things happen. I am a man of the world, uh, going to and fro and walking up and down in it. Now, death smells. I mean, death has a special smell. Over and above the smell of cyanide, cordite, blood, carrion, or burnt flesh. It's a gray smell. It stops the heart and cuts off the breath. Smell of the empty body, smell of field hospitals and gangrene. I got a whiff of it when Mr. Green walked into my office. Now, Ernest Hemingway could smell it on others, too. Here he is in a jeep with General Lanham, known as Bucky to his friends. And Ernie was a real general lover. <laughs> it's worse than being a cop lover. Well, here they are, and he's returning from the front line where uh, Major Jones was in charge. Have to relieve that man, says Bucky. Bucky, says Ernie, you won't have to relieve him. He won't make it. He stinks of death. When the jeep reached regimental command post, it was stopped by the turn Colonel John Ruggles. Uh, General, said Ruggles, saluting, the Major has just been killed. Uh, who takes the first battalion? <clears throat> Uh, well, Mr. Hart isn't trying to be a nice guy any longer. It is, he decides, uphill and rather unrewarding work. Mr. Hart sets out to be death. He learns to kill through his newspapers, and he teaches his editors the tricks as they crawl up his ladder. Now you just move this tenement fire over here and burn some more niggers. Chuckling over roasted babies, car accidents, and riots like a southern lawman feeling his nigger notches. 
Mr. Hart has to be inhuman because humans are mortal. And Mr. Hart is addicted to immortality. He's addicted to an immortality predicated on the mortality of others, skooks, niggers, wogs, human dogs. And feeling his own contempt for these apes affords him a mineral calm. He's addicted to a certain brain frequency, a little high blue note feels so good, that feeling he can just swim in it forever and ever. And this cool blue frequency comes from making hands tremble and sweat, from feeling the dear meritorious poor wriggle and slobber under his boots, from making people ugly and grind in their faces, and from knowing and squash an editor like a bug and seeing his editor know it. See the action, B.J., this old searching tycoon with this uh, dark side to his character. <clears throat> Mr. Hart, death will not serve a stranger who cannot prove his title, a gringo who fears the very word and sets up a house rule that the word death may not be pronounced in his presence. Hey, look at all them dead bodies. Audrey points with his left hand as virus B-23. Surfacing from remote seas of past time, rages through cities of the world like a topping forest fire. Last take, Mr. Hart's deserted, ruined mansion, graffiti on the walls. A pook was here. Here lived a stupid, vulgar son of a bitch who thought he could hire death as a company cop. Yes, sir. Thank you. Washing the dinner dishes with a plastic sponge. I'm standing at the sink washing the dinner dishes with a plastic sponge. And I'm hearing your words and seeing you, but I don't know what you're talking about. I'm hearing your words and seeing you, but I don't know what you're talking about. I'm hearing your words and seeing you, but I don't know what you're talking about. And if there's one thing that drives me crazy, it's stupidity. If there's one thing that drives me crazy, it's stupidity. Gotta, gotta keep, keep on, on trying till I, till I can't, can't keep, keep trying, trying no more. Gotta keep on trying till I can't keep trying no more. And nothing, nothing worse could happen, happen than losing everything. everything. And nothing worse could happen than losing everything. And I ain't got anything more than my shirts. You, you gotta, gotta understand, understand the mood I was in. I was I was down, down and dirty. And me, I was down and dirty. And dirty me. And you're nothing and you're pathetic and you're nothing and you're pathetic and you're nothing and you're pathetic. I've been to the post office, I'm going to the bank, and what am I gonna do about con it? I've been to the post office, I'm going to the bank, and what am I gonna do about con it? Anger, 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 I'm angry, I'm angry. And I, and I was with, with him, him that, that afternoon, afternoon, and I was with him that afternoon. And, and you were warm and sweet and friendly, friendly. and you were warm and sweet and friendly. friendly. I opened my heart and talked for hours. Vicious, vicious, treacherous, and deceitful, vicious, treacherous, and deceitful. How could you, how be, could you so be so cruel? A problem with power is you never, never know who your enemies are. are. I, I want out, I want out, I want out, I want out. Cause, Cause if, if I'm, I'm headed for a heartache, why the hell am I still here? Cause if I'm headed for a heartache, why the hell am I still here? And ocean, I suffer, suffer. You ain't, you ain't my friend, friend no more, and, and I wish I could make it stick. You ain't my friend no more, and I wish I could make it stick. I want you to put your ear to stone. 
and open your heart to the sky. I want you to put your ear to stone and open your heart to the sky. And I can only do that for one second. Thank you for the wisdom, mind. And, and then, then I'm going to start thinking again about what, what I said, said to you. And then, then I'm, I'm going to start thinking, thinking again, again about, about what, what I said, I said to you. you. Drinking, Drinking my, my beer. beer. Two steps forward and three steps back. I'm feeling weak and I just might crack. Two steps forward and three steps back. I'm feeling weak and I just might crack. I'd rather, I'd rather stay, stay home, home watching TV than see anybody I know. I'd rather stay home watching TV than see anybody I know. I'd rather stay home watching TV than see anybody I know. I'd rather stay home watching TV than see anybody I know. Tell me why love, tell me why love, it's like a ball, it's like a ball, it's like a ball and change and change. It's like a ball and change and change. And you lay down your bed, you lay down your bed, you lay down your bed. And, and I, I want to change, change the TV program, and I want to change the TV program. I'm going to wait for you, Humphrey Bogart, Rita Hayworth, Hayworth and Sydney Greenstreet on the 430 movie. Edith Archie Park, I won't watch you forever. But this isn't what I want to see, but this isn't what I want to see, but this isn't what I want to see. Dick Havn, please come, Dick Havn, please come. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, because I got to go, because I got to go, because I got to go. You're standing by the refrigerator, you're standing by the refrigerator, spooning into your mouth, sourly like your yogurt chip on cherry pie, spooning into your mouth, sourly like luscious yogurt chip on cherry pie, you almost finished the whole aluminum pot and all by yourself, you almost finished the whole aluminum pot and all by yourself. And I want you to play another somebody done somebody wrong song. And I want you to play another somebody done somebody wrong song. And make me feel at home. I want to drink some more whiskey. I want to drink some more whiskey. Smoke another cigarette. And smoke some more dope. And think about what I was saying to you. I just got off the airplane from LA. I just got off the airplane from LA. And my hands are shaking. And my hands are shaking. I hate cocaine. I hate cocaine. I hate cocaine. Because two days later it makes me feel like I wish I was dead. Because two days later it makes me feel like I wish I was dead. And it's empty, and it's empty, and it's empty, and jive.